It is almost five days since activities were grounded in public universities across Nigeria. This follows an industrial action by the Sino Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities, NASU, the National Association of Academic Technologists, NAT, and the Non-Academic Staff Unions of Educational and Associated Institutions. While well, this development raises the big question, when will the Nigerian government bring to an end the incessant strike by various labor unions in the country, especially in the educational sector? And tonight, we project our searchlight on the ongoing industrial action by all these unions. And you can also join the conversation through a dedicated phone number as the discussion unfolds. And that's the trend on Friday's edition of Daily Politics on Trust TV. As we dissect politics, policy and governance. I am Hamza Idris. Welcome to the program and Ramadan Karim. And to get a clear understanding of the demands of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, the Union's Chairman of the University of Abuja Chapter, Nuruddin Yusuf, joins, us, joins me live in the studio. Mr. Chairman, welcome to Daily Politics. Thank you very much. And we're happy having you in our studio. Thank you so time. much. So I'm also delighted to be here. Yes. And good evening, Nigerians. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you very much. But before the talks, let's have some tidbits. Two students of Nasarawa State University, Kefi, have lost their lives while trying to receive rice palliative from the state government. Reports said the students gathered at the gate waiting to receive their shares while security personnel were controlling the venue of the distribution. Trust TV gathered that the students could not wait for the state government officials to commence the distribution as they jumped into the venue, causing stampede that led to the loss of lives, unfortunately. And elsewhere, at least 21 people, including the village head, lost their lives on Thursday afternoon when bandits in their numbers reportedly invaded the market in Madaka, an agrarian community, a Rafi local government of Niger State. Residents said the attackers invaded the market around 3 p.m. when it was at its peak and started shooting sporadically. Many people were said to have sustained various degrees of injuries and are receiving treatment at the IBB Specialist Hospital in Mina. Hot, touching stories there, Nordin. Yes, you can see our tidbits, two terrible stories. Um, maybe we should start with, um, yes, the last one in Niger State. Daylight on Thursday, bandits invaded a market and just killed people, 21 yeah. in number. How far can we say life has been reduced in Nigeria? Sincerely, uh, maybe I will start with uh, my condolences to the people of uh, Niger State, the government and people of Niger State. Mm -hmm. This is a most unfortunate incident, and this is one too many in our country. The issue of bandits taking hold and holding sway in our communities, both in rural and even urban areas, is an issue that is disturbing, and honestly, we need to do all we can, both as people and as a government, to stem this tide. Yes, and, and sometimes you, 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 you rarely see such stories making headlines. For instance, if you tune in radio stations, very unlikely to see the station starting with uh, this 2012 because so the number is not much. It's not much. And uh, when we were young, it wasn't like this, right? Yes, it's most unfortunate because <coughs> we've just tend to norm these numbers. So when you even hear the news, bandits attack, what you're just going to say, oh, what is the number? Oh, five, ten. But these are human lives. These are people who have loved ones, who are also playing their own parts in the development of the nations. Mm. Most of the way that they are farmers or they are marketers. And it is through these exchange that they help in developing the nations. Mm -hmm. So, but because we are used to these stories, we no longer feel it as if anything. What we just oh, what's the numbers? Oh, if it's more than 30, 30, 40, oh, this is sad and life goes on. And and the next day you, you even forget about it. You forget it. In fact, the, 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 the next minute, because within the next uh, epi uh, few hours, there's a new episode. So it's as if they are trying to even undo each other in this level of there carnage. Competition. Exactly, in this level carnage. of carnage. It's unfortunate, but uh, I think uh, our security force, even though we commend them for their efforts, 
they need also to step up this side. And I think also we too as a people, if we see something as they used to say, we should say something. Mm -hmm. We need to assist them by giving them information and not giving ideas to these terrorists. Because also some of them too, from the news we've seen over the past 24 hours, they have informants. Yes. They have people that give the information of looking. Just imagine going to a market which runs on maybe on days of the week, maybe every five, five days or seven, seven days, and just open fire on people. It's and I, I've, I've said this on, on this program several times. A, a certain uh, senior security personnel, you know, he once told me that there is no electoral ward in Nigeria that you don't have security personnel. If you don't have somebody who is from the army, should be from the navy, from the air force, from the police, from civil defense, maybe a, a prison warden or correctional service official, custom immigration. At least from these agencies, you will have at least one person in each electoral world, meaning that uh, if there is patriotism, we should be able to police our country instead of lamenting that we have short number of police operators. Of course we have, but trying to be patriotic, at least everyone should be a police person. I agree with you. We all have a role to play in this uh, something, by in this uh, challenge that the country is facing. We all have a role to play, but then also we also look at how do the our security engineers make use of this intelligence, this intel they gather. How did they use, how did they respond? Mm -hmm. Because at times too, when you give some of those information, the timeline between response and some of these things is actually very slow. And because imagine you see maybe a convoy of thirty or forty bikes, yes. people on bikes moving towards a particular direction, and some of them carry ammunition. And of course, we also have to look at the fact that in some of those places, communication is very bad. Mm -hmm. We also have to look. But sincerely, I think. All of us as Nigerians, we shouldn't leave this issue or this challenge to the security forces alone. We all have a role to play. All right. Now moving to your constituency, the incident at the um, Nasarawa State University gave you stampage. People, they say 7.5 kg of rice. And the whole university converged around the square, you know, waiting to... And I think they were too impatient or either that they were too hungry that they had to now cross over into the venue, you know, scrambling for the rice. What do you have to say on this? I think, I think uh, this is most unfortunate, and we don't seem to learn from experience in this country. We have to learn, just last month, we also heard about the issue of the custom distribution in Lagos, yes. where there was stampede and people bought. Because these things happen over time, nobody is called to question, nobody is punished, we just take it on the news, and after a day or two, we just go back to our normal lives. Mm -hmm. Imagine, there are, there are processes, there are ways in which this can be distributed in a more orderly manner. Yes, I think the state government will have liars. I don't know what, the, what the, this thing is there. They can liaise with the unions. All, because there are the student union bodies too. Yes. They can liaise with the management of the university. They can share this either through departments or faculties. Or there are, there are different layers in which this kind of some, blame, uh, this some blame the, the government for actually show off that uh, okay, of whatever course. we want to do, of course. we want to do it with pomp and pageantry. Of course, this is some of these things. Some of them are actually just done for the optics rather than for the real intention to meet out to the students. Because honestly, if you have a bag of rice or 10 or 20, it's not even bag. <laughs> that was 7.5 kg. Yes. That's just about uh, in the local parts, about two or three moodles or so. Yes, for students, fine. But then there are ways in which you can share these things. There are so many institutions or organizations well structured within the university. Either through the academic faculties or through the student union bodies or any other means which is more coordinated and more organized. In fact, people will just be in their hostel or their homes and they, and they go and get them. their their take their rights or their distance to them. But when you now gather people in a in a in a stadium like environment without any coordination without any leadership, this is bound to happen. Because mm. this undermines the level, yes, poverty, we, we may say, or things like that. But more importantly, the level of organizations and preparedness. In this country, we had exams in, in our national study just behind us, and about, is it 13 or 21 uh, yes, applicants yes. lost their life? Mm. Nobody was punished. It happened also recently in Lagos, nobody was the punished. And started. this too also repeat itself. Because what we just hear at the end of the day is that, oh, they are going to set up a panel to investigate the matter. You never see the outcome of these investigations. You never see the results from this. And you never see any lessons learned from this. It's only in Nigeria that these things are organized. Mm. But globally, we don't get this type of news. Mm. And I think we need to help our auntie in organizing this type of something so that we don't lose 
innocent lives on this, especially future generations. Exactly. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Nuruddin. Now back to our main discussion of the day, the ongoing strike by the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and associated mm -hmm. bodies. You are the chairman of, of NASU. I want to ask, mm -hmm. what are the main issues that necessitated this strike? Uh, thank you so much. Um, we is a warning strike under the auspices of Jack, which is the Joint Action Committee of Sanu and Nasu. Wow. And of course, too, NAT has also joined from Wednesday. Now, what are the issues? Of course, the real fundamental issues is about renegotiation of 2009 agreements. 2009? Yes, 2009 agreements. That's a long time. That's a long time. There is an agreement that will enter with the government effective from 1st July 2009. This is nearly 15, 15 years. years. 15 years. So, it, so it predates the administration of Tinubu, yes. administration of Buhari, exactly. administration it, of Jonathan. In fact, the, the agreement was signed by the administration of late President Yaradra. And part of the main body of the agreement is that this agreement will be reviewed in line with ILO Convention 98. International level yes, organization. Yes, ILO Convention 98 and also the mid-term sector strategy for Nigeria under Vision 2020 then. And of course, this was supposed to be reviewed every three years. And in fact, specifically stated in that agreement that by 2012, it will be reviewed. But between then and now, 15 years down the line, we've not been able to look at this renegotiation and things like that. So what are the issues? Now, in, those, in that document, basically four areas for renegotiation. One is issues that has to do with issue of this, uh, conditions of service, university governance, funding of universities, and others. Those are the four broad areas of the 2009 agreements. Now, down the line, between during the uh, administration of the last uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, yes. 2016, so there was a real agitation and then they set up a renegotiation committee. A renegotiation? Yes, led by Professor Wali, I mean, uh, Dr. Wali Babalakin. Mm. And of course, along the line, there were issues, and Babalakin had to resign from the committee. Then the government set up another committee led by Professor Munza Lijibri. And uh, they did also what they need to do, but then government see dissatisfied with the report of Munza Lijibri committee set up another committee led by late Professor Nimi Briggs. And of course, in the passing away of Nimi Briggs, sometimes last year or thereabouts, mm. the committee were not able to finish their work. And because of that, union were making agitation and having agreements with government as MOU. In some instances, we have even memorandum of action, moving even for memorandum of understanding. But then, of course, government always reneged on their Part. Promises on their own parts. So that led to a full blown strike in 2022. Sanu and Nasu embarked on strike on the 28th of March 2022. And during the period of that strike, government also invoked the policy of no work, no pay. Yes. So our salaries were withheld. But in July 2022, thereabouts, Government invited the unions for negotiation, and that negotiation ended in mid-August 2022, thereby necessitating both parties to do certain action. On our own our part, is for us to go and call off the strike, which we did on the 21st of August 2022. While on government part, one fundamental clause in that agreement, Sanu and Nasu enter with government, is the non-victimization clause, yes. which says that no member of these unions shall suffer any form of victimization or injustice as a result of participating in this strike. Yes. That is very fundamental. Yes. But to our surprise, our withheld salaries, government withheld, until now, they didn't pay those salaries. How many months? Four months salaries. Four months? Yes. And of course, March, I mean, May, June, July, and even August when we resumed, they didn't pay us to show lack of faith in that agreement on the part of government. Even the August that we resumed, they didn't pay us. So when, when, when we now had that agreement 
it's it's an ongoing uh, negotiations back and forth certain aspects were also dealt with because not only about the finances there's issue of the governing councils there's issue of the visitation panel the regular set of visitation panel and keeping to their own part of the game and uh, bargain to they release the white paper on the visitation panel mm -hmm. but unfortunately the white paper is released the people that are implementing which is the governing council have been dissolved so it's uh, almost okay. like taking from the right and Exactly. Even, the right, even, exactly. even the one on the left has exactly. been taken. Has been taken. Now, when, when he took over President yes. Tinubu, yes. of course, just the way he announced the removal of oil sources, yes, he also said strikes in universities gone, right? Yes. Something like that. Yes. Does that sound okay when you had it? Of course. We, of course, also as uh, stakeholders in universities, we're also worried that we go on strike because it, it allows the academic calendar. Which we will actually yeah, do it exactly. later. We but I mean, <coughs> why do you think it, it happened again? And it's not, you see, when the government make some of those pronouncements, it's not just by making pronouncements. You also have to follow those pronouncements with actions. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, this current government, led by President Ahmed Bola Tunebu, actually in October 2023, pronounced or made a presidential directive that four months with their salaries of university workers will be paid. Mm. That, so you are all happy at that time. And we're all happy at that and we're waiting. Six months down the line, between October and now, we only discovered that the academics were the only ones that were paid, leaving out the three other non-teaching unions. So just as if you have a table that has four legs and you decide to just exclude one leg. I'm sure that table also cannot stand on one leg. So that is what we are today. Cannot stand on, on one exactly. leg. Yes. Now, there was a meeting on Wednesday, right? Yes. And it was deadlocked. Yes. Why, why you couldn't make headway during that meeting? Well, uh, the unions are open to negotiation, even though we had very short notice to that invitation. We were still there. We still came to show faith and seriousness on the part of union leadership. At least we are open to discussion. We are open to negotiation. But of course, government has not been able to put anything on the table. Because I need to remind our viewers and Nigerians that even the issue of the with SLI is not the main issue that led to the strike. It was something that happened incidentally to the strike. Why I went to strike mainly is about the renegotiation of those things which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you mentioned for, even though I, strike, only, uh -huh. I only wrote one so, here, it's the exactly, funding of the university. Exactly. Yeah. So it's in the course of the strike that our salary were withdrawn. And we said, look, you can't beat a child and also deny him crime. Deny him crime. Because if you talk about, okay, there's a policy that says no work, no pay, but what if the employer also fails on his own part mm. with respect to his resp responsibility to the employee? What happens to the employer? Do you also stop his salaries too? So these are the issues that we're talking about. And we're saying that, okay, for you to show good faith on the part of government, since it's a presidential directive, please, <coughs> Mr. Minister, the first thing is go and implement that presidential directive. Yes, and you cannot selectively implement it. It has to because be we also met with you and you also gave us those assurances because even after the presidential uh, directive we also met with the minister sometimes in November last year who also said yes this is the directive and they are working towards that directive but the implementation now we can see the results and this is nothing but aim at causing this harmony in the university system. All right. Thank you very much, Nuruddin Yusuf, Chairman, Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, University of Abuja Chapter. Okay. Yes. We will now open the line so that maybe Nigerians will ask you a question. Yeah. Because it is now the right time for you to call through a dedicated phone number displayed on your screen to share your thoughts on the ongoing strike by Sanu, Nasu, and Associated Union. What is the solution? to the incident industrial action in public universities. But remember to keep your comments precise and play by the rules of engagement. Over to you, we're expecting your calls. Yes, now you earlier mentioned that it's like a table with four legs. Yes. Now you, you use a very good nail to ensure that one remains intact, yes. but the three are you are, are you now saying Sanu, Nasu, and what have you? They are the remaining theory. Uh, Don't you think universities can survive without you? You, you see, uh, just as the analogy of the table, can the table stand on a leg? Certainly no. You see, the university, we call it university, is a system mm. where everybody has specific role or different roles to play that complements each other. Yeah. Are you getting my point? Yes. Let's look at it even from the basic uh, points. 
when a student comes to university, the first thing that you have to get admitted, right? Yes. Who, who handled those admission process? They don't teach you staff. Okay, they don't teach you staff. We have a caller. Maybe he has a question for you. Lawan Bichi from Kano. Welcome to the program, Lawan. Um, good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Yes, good evening. Yes. yes. Uh, I have... Um, I, in the previous uh, weeks, I tried to call you, but I fell due to a lot of problems. Okay. But today, I'm just to condone those students who died at Matara during that distribution of a uh, of, uh, of the third pallet. Mm. All right. Thank you, Media Soros uh, in peace. Yes. Uh, and I guess I'm praying for them that government should pay their own investment. And just pray for them. Okay. You are saying government should pay entitlements of non-academic staff in universities, right? No, um, non-academic staff. Yes. Okay. The, that is my contribution for today. All Thank right. You and good night. Thank you very much, Lawan, all the way from Bichi in, in Kano State. He, I, I think it's a solidarity call to, to you people. But, but why, why problems in universities always around money? I mean... No, you see, uh, it's not about money per se, but you see, for you to have quality university education, it is a capital intensive endeavor, mm -hmm. endeavor globally. That is why, even for you to fund education, the UNESCO minimum standard or recommended standard is 26% of the annual budget. But Nigeria, the best we've done was just 7%. 26% UNESCO, UNESCO. That is the recommended uh, minimum for, uh, for budget. But for Nigeria education. is 7%. That is the highest we've ever done. We're hovering between 3 or 4% or thereabouts. That is very, very far from the minimum standard. And you, no, no country actually can progress without taking care of the education sector. And look at the statistics with respect to children. I mean, uh, education in Nigeria. Out of school children, going to almost uh, 15 million, get child education, we are at the bottom of globally, and even university education. But each day you hear we create new universities. Where are the personnel that will fill this university? Where is the funding? Most especially in the states. You have state governors who just wake up and establish university in their local government. University has been turned to constituency projects. That is not the standard for setting of universities. Yeah. And issues that even led to proper governance university is absent. Yes. As I'm talking to you now, all university governing council in federal universities and most state universities have been dissolved. A big question there. We have a caller now from the south in the person of um, Terry. Oh, Harry, of okay. course. Okay. Welcome to the program, Harry. Where are you calling from? Okay, IBR. Hello. Uh, good evening to the people on the studio. Yes. Ha, how are you, Hello. Harry? Welcome. Uh, um, how are you, Harry? Welcome. Yes. Okay. I'm calling from other states. Uh, okay. Harry, please, can you reduce the volume of your TV set so that we can hear you properly? So that we can hear you properly. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, Harry. Okay. Yes. Are you hearing me now? Very well. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. I want the federal government to pay. Okay. You want federal government to pay the uh, allowances, I mean, and salaries of the non-academic staff, right? And non academic staff, yes. Okay, where will the government get the money, Harry? How can you advise the government? Because they say they don't have money. Uh. Yes. Yes, please, please, can you try and call again? It's like there is a gap between us here in the studio and you over there. Thank you. Okay, but the same message, Lawan and Harry, that they should... This, and I should ask this question now. Some are saying it is rivalry between you and academic staff because government said, okay, let's pay the teachers. Maybe later we'll pay those who support the teachers. And then you now said, okay, the only way is to sabotage the process. Since they pay the teachers, let's also go and ensure that they pay us. Could that be correct? No, that's not correct. That's not true. You see, just as I was saying, our work is complementary. 
not rivalry or not contradictory. Okay. For you to have a university system that is viable and enduring, these two components must work together. That's why I was giving the analogy of, let's say, just use a, 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 a prototype or a student as an example. He gets admission, right? Mm. The admission will process before he goes into the faculty of his course of choice. There he will be trained by the academics, right? Yeah. Within the course of those at the academics, it will interact with non-teaching staff. Maybe when he's sick, he goes to the clinic. Yes. For him to get accommodation, he has to interact with non-teaching staff to get accommodated in the hostels. And it's also the welfare and the hostels have been taken care of by these non-teaching staff, electricity, water. So all this cleaning. is done by the non-academics. Exactly. Okay, They're let's take Mohamed from Bauchi before you continue. Sorry for cutting you short. Yes, Mohamed, welcome to the program. Yes, yes Mohamed, go ahead. Um, uh, in fairly speaking, I feel for fairly speaking, I feel for the academic and non-academic staff unions of Nigerian universities. Serious, okay. Because in fairly speaking, we are dealing with our government. They have proven along the line all the previous regimes to date. We don't know of this one actually. It is just nine months old. We don't know how it's going to. Uh, carry out uh, the, the negotiated agreements. But all signs are negative for now. But I sincerely think they should be paid. They should be paid their formal salaries. And I think Nigerians also should also support these people. Because sincerely speaking, if you pass through the university system, you understand that they are suffering. They are struggling. They are building a nation. Mm. By educating the youth, by educating the future generation of this country. And it's as if the people in the government, they don't want anybody to cross over. It's as if they're not going to get old. It's like they want to remain there for life. But the truth of the matter is, it is a shameful behavior when you compare Nigerian level of education to other small countries. Smaller countries that are not even up to the level of Nigeria. Providing many universities without adequate funding, I don't think is the way to go. And sincerely speaking, I commend the, the actions taken by them, although it will affect the students in some cases, but it is a step towards the right direction because if they are able to achieve what they will achieve, definitely schools will be highly effective for the future generations to come. And we need a change of direction, instead of speaking. That okay, Mohamed, you said, okay. Uh, Mohamed, can you hear me? Yes, key, yes, key word there. We need a change of direction. Now, everyone... Take, I'm listening. Yes, I said, no? you, you mentioned something which is key, that we need a change of direction. But when you look at it, yes. every other person takes the blame to the table of government. Can't we look for what options do you think we have? Yeah, what options do you think universities have so that they can be self-sustaining, at least maybe by 50% or 70%? So can, I'm not oh, you didn't hear. Okay, I said, what advice do you have? What advice do you have okay. for universities so that they can be self-sustaining, maybe by 50% or by 70%? I think the, the, the connection is bad. Thank you very much, Mohammed. You have passed the message. And uh, yes, Nuruddin is here to share more light. Yes. So, yes, you are saying UNESCO standard, 26%. And the, and the here, over in between 3, 5, you know, we barely the reach. Best, the best we've done was 7%. And that was uh, during the early days of the Warrior Administration, if I can get my facts right. Mm. But why I was talking about the complementary, so that's how we work in it. That's why we call it a system. Mm. Everybody has to please or for you to bring out the, the product. And the product in this case is a qualitative graduate. That's why even in your certificate you say, having found you, having meeting the academic requirements and find you worthy in learning and character. Mm. That is what you said on your university certificate. So this is how the university says. So it's not a rivalry between, in fact, it is complementary. They are colleagues, they are friends. For example, you may be a pharmacist and the pharmacy may decide to be in the academics impacting knowledge, or the farmers may desire to work in the university health centers. 
So this is how it works in university. You have also the lawyers and the other people that works in bursary and audit. So okay. this is how all these things work. So it's mm. complementary but not rivalry. All right. So we have another uh, caller. government yeah. that is trying to create this dichotomy or this harmony. Okay. We have another caller from Ekiti State in the person of Prince. Prince, welcome to the program. Okay, Chris. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, the issue that happened in uh, Nepal is rather unfortunate. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, I think the government of that state want to turn it to a political uh, issue. Mm. Because as far as I'm concerned, I think there are diverse ways by which they can, if indeed they want to assist the students, if they want to distribute food, they could have taken it to the various departments in those schools. Mm. And those departments, each of the students have matric number. They could distribute such food to them based on their matric number, rather than calling them to the stadium whereby they have not, they've not put any arrangement in place in order to forestall a kind of stampede that they had. It's rather unfortunate. And I think the government should be irresponsible. They should pay, I mean, they, 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 the government should be sued for this action. And I want to believe each and every of those that we are uh, killed due to that family should be adequate. Their family should be adequately compensated. Okay, thank you. And thank you. Based on this issue, we are looking at the the, the one you are presently talking about. Uh, the government is not sincere hmm. because if you look at it very carefully, this is an agreement that has been reached in 2009 or thereabouts. Yes. And up to now, it's still lingering. If we have a government that has been shortcoming, all these things would have been solved a long time ago. Because this, this, this issue can cause a lot of trouble for most of the students in such a way that the academic section could be prolonged due to this uh, incessant strife. So how long shall we continue like this? Mm. to continuously to engage in strike upon strike. I think the government should just deal with this issue once and for all. all Thank right. you very much. Thank you very much for calling, and we appreciate your um, contribution. Yes, Nuruddin. I, I read it somewhere that, uh, yes, a certain woman, I think uh, Ruth Gottsman, she donated $1 billion. $1 billion. I don't know. Can we convert it? It's Nigeria. It's huge. It's, it's huge money. And, and she, she donated this to um, Albert Einstein College. Yes, the, uh, medical college. Medical college. Yes. To pay tuition for students. And even those full... I think there must be criteria. Of yes, she, she said for students and the future generation. For tuition billion. That in her speech that this money, she's donating it, that from now on till in the future... This college is not tuition free for the students. And she, and she has been teaching in that school yes, since was, 60s, uh, yes, you know? She was an emeritus 60s. professor. Now, where is the missing link in Nigeria? You can see, I, I'm citing this as an example mm. on how public systems are maintained. Mm. Why are you always taking your trouble to the government instead of also making, maybe making case to private individuals that look, Instead of being, being building private universities just for the sake of building private, we have enough universities, don't we, in Nigeria? Assuming we have a lot of enough equipment in the existing universities, I think each one of them, if there are equipment, it can accommodate maybe five times the number they are accommodating now. Why are people, of course, there are some who are trying to support, but I don't think if it is commensurate with the demand. Yes, um, of course. Uh, Funding of universities cannot be left for government alone. And uh, one of the major ways in which also university gets funding is through endowments and some charitable organizations, or even through uh, Professor Ratia. But these are actually interventions. Okay. They will not suffice for the main funding. The owners of these universities are government themselves. 
There is no substitute to that. So there is no substitute to that. And of course, it's also the policy of government to make this education affordable and available for Nigerians. They also mean the major beneficiary is also government because when you have qualitative and educated populace, you are, you are more likely to develop faster and at a bigger at a fa uh, faster pace than when you have majority illiterate population. All right. So you can't take interventions to suffice for major funding. All right. We have JP Wang from Plato State. Welcome to the program, Mr. Wang. Thank you. Thank yes. you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. We're happy having you. Yeah. And uh, what do you have for us? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to raise some condolences to the incident that happened at Nova State University. The federal world condoled to the Nigerians. Thank you. Uh, regarding the, what I have my take, if government is more sincere, we are driving forward in education in our country. Then they must pay attention to to manpower. Mm. That the key players. Because the workers deserve their wages. Somebody is working, you don't pay him, you know he's due at the right time. The person will get frustrated. His attention could be diverted. These are people that have family. We have dependents, you know, to take care of them. Why is it so four months, you know, without having, you know, his basic, his basic need? Imagine how can certain new here, you know, give his best. When it comes to the area, for instance, of education. So, my own advice, federal government should play their role effectively. Because if there is efficiency, I'm federal government playing their role. There won't be any need for instance, for Mm. You know, with regard to you know, you know, admission, even the higher institution, you know, for instance. Okay. Let me just say something, sir. Okay, yes. go ahead, briefly. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, yes sir. A little diversion. You see, like most civil servants, because uh, the structure, I want to talk about the structure. The structure is not well balanced. Okay. If the structure is very well, is well balanced, there will be you know, a kind of a, a minimity. For instance, when the, the university is a system, which we know. So why should there be a unity between lecturers, you know, non-academy and academic, you know, all this, you know, a uh, 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 disparity. You know, among the those things should be avoided you know, automatically. Mm -hmm. For instance, somebody who has, for instance, maybe he has a, a PhD, and then give an example, and then is within the non-academic. And then somebody has H uh, PhD in the academics. Sometimes we we kind of there the, is the kind of a, a disparity you know, between the two of them. Mm. It should not be so. Okay. There should be kind of harmonization. It should be harmonization, you know, in terms of what people take home, they are paid. All these things we are very very time. All right. That is number one. Okay. And Finally, people, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Mm. The manpower. You understand? When we have, you know, is given, you know, his permission in due time, it will cushion the effect of what he is passing through. So what I'm just saying here in conclusion, yes. the federal government should play their role. Those key players, let them play the role that is due to these people. Because I, I, I believe you know, there are people that have been given the mandate to take care of, of, of these uh, people. So why are they withholding, you know, the benefit of people? All so right. I'm not a nation. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Jeffy Wong, for your contribution, and we hope to have you thank some you. other time. Thank you very much. It's like, um, Nuru, you are just getting solidarity left, right, and center. Well, uh, because, of course, what is the truth is obvious. Mm. You see, uh, just as I rightly said, mm. even during the period of the strike, our members, their service is so critical that we can't just completely withdraw our service. Because even the during the strike? The system will collapse. Let me give you an example. We have our members that work in the safety or security unit. Hmm. And if they are not there... And if they are not there... Anarchy. There will be anarchy. Apart from that, even the infrastructure university, you just go on site and there will no be university to come back to. So even though there is a strike, some of them still have to render services. Skeletal. To make sure critical infrastructure, lives and properties are maintained. We actually did a story, um, I think so, two days ago, that in some of the schools, mm. you know, the smell, you know, oozing out now. Yes, because from, they are not and able then the to, cleanliness. to exactly. 
that is also an environmental uh, issues that can lead to uh, a public health uh, uh, disaster. Now, and look, more importantly, let me just give another uh, this thing. People go for national service. It's national requirement. It is our members that possess and mobilize those people. So if, for example, all universities in Nigeria, people that work in that critical station, academic planning and the uh, academic mm. office, decide to complete down to no Nigerian graduate will be mobilized for service. Don't know. Can see the impact on it. Even if they are graduated. Are you worried about what Jeffy Wang mentioned, this structural imbalance that... Uh, you know, the, the academic staff, maybe mm. if you have degree, I have degree, yeah. but because I teach, mm. maybe I get, you know, uh, preferential treatment compared to you. You will answer this after I take the next call okay. um, from Bayelis Estate. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. Hello, good evening. Good yeah. evening, yeah. Yes, we can hear you. You are welcome. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want... Yes. Okay. I want to say that I... Honestly, I pity the, our lecturers. Mm. The treatment given to them is not fair. Okay. Everyone that is on top there was taught by teachers. Teachers, security agents, and doctors. These are the three people that are supposed to be well taken care of in a nation. Teachers, security agents, and doctors. They're supposed to earn the highest salary. But if you check, most of them are not getting what they're supposed to get. Mm. They sacrifice their life to make us what we are today. It's a pity that agreement that was made since 1920-2009. Could you imagine how till today that is still lingering? Eh? Yeah. So that is still lingering until now. Do we have a government at all? Hmm. It's not a pity. Eh? Yes. Look at a course that a student should spend five years because of strike. It will take up to seven. And the people, the parents are the ones suffering the body of paying hostel accommodation, school fees, and all the rest. Eh? Yes. And the people who are there, could you imagine? Okay, they they don't have money. Each administration that comes, they will now give budget to buy new cars for them. These are retired governors that spend eight years. Eh? Yes. Where they're not using cars, bulletproof cars. Then when they now get there, we we'll still do better to give them a new car. Hmm. We'll check how much it is. But to pay this one that are building the children, we don't care. Okay, federal government school is used to be 40, 50. 60% 60 from the government, then 40% from the university. Hmm. Unfortunately, even the universities are not producing anything. I remember when we were primary school, we were doing craft work. Yeah. From that class work, we'll be selling them. We are come and say, College of Education, Technology, and other. what are they producing hmm. that we are doing selling? Engineering department, what are they producing? Are you getting the issue? You are Very producing well. people who are, not, who are just useless. Hmm. You just are supposed to be producing something. Are you, are you, saying you make them what, self reliant from the school. Hmm. I look at all this engineering department, College of Agri Agriculture, supposed to be supplying fish, supplying tomatoes, Gary, and several other things. This is enjoy what we are producing by ourselves. So when they supply 40%, the government will supply 60%. It's not heavily in this country that is producing anything. Because you can't any university that is producing anything, and you are producing people who are theoretical, not practical. So what the, the, the let me tell Nigeria, I don't know whether I will say it is, it is organized to fail. I don't, I can't, I, I don't know, because the trading people who are there, look at, it is a million that people will go there, you are budgeting one and something million to buy cash for a, for a, what, a retired governor, I will say a retired governor, somebody that will finish eight years and get to receive it. 
You All have right. to give him some million to give you how much? How much? Remove it from the from the from the budget of the country. It's not working. So you now see that the wickedness we are doing in this country is only God that will deliver us. But All right. leaders are wicked. Thank you. They are very very wicked. They don't want the most. All right. Thank you very much. He's he's angry, but I think this why he he balances argument. He, he said, uh, universities should also contribute. What will you say on this? Of course. Research. I was told of a certain, so if I not one, mm -hmm. many universities in the U mm -hmm. United States, for instance, they even give money to the government because the research they conduct, they are uptakers, mm -hmm. and they get a lot of money. They give scholarships to students, you know. So here, of course, you non-academic staff, and you are a leader. Mm -hmm. Have you started maybe thinking this way to tell, you know, university vice chancellors the committee mm. there, you know, the boards of the universities to say, okay, can we start thinking inwards so that we can survive, even if there is no it, government it, out there? It's just a, a bit amusing because we don't seem to appreciate what we have also with us. Yes. Just last week or last two weeks, there's a pronouncement by governments that they are going to use 0.5% of the GDP to fund research. Mm. And also that they're also going to use researches from our institutions to also pilot and develop the, the nation or develop government. So we have also abundance of researches which are done locally here. But because too, it is not the, the, the function of those researchers or the it's for government or opticals to take them up. Mm -hmm. That is what we call town and gown, where the academics meet also with mm -hmm. the society. So it's not that there's positive of research. Yes, there could be area for improvement, but you see, we still come out to the same underlying issue, funding. I will give you an example. Yes. University of Abuja, for example, we spend over 100 million a month on diesel alone. 100 diesel, million? Diesel, yes. A diesel is about a liter, is over 1,600 there, but a length is coming down. Yes. But there's a time when, as far as what? So, if you, what is the overhead cost for the University of Abuja? So, the total overhead cost the university gets does not even fund diesel alone. Not you still have to water, pay for water, sanitation. you still have to pay for uh, electricity. You see, so, you see, the bottom line is, is funding. Look at what happened in a OAU last month, about three or four weeks ago, where we lost a technologist to a lion. We also saw the picture of those lions yes. or things like that. You see, you can't have research or qualitative research where you don't have adequate funding. Adequate funding. Okay, now we are rounding up. If you are to advise government, what will you tell them to do? Because I know that this strike cannot just continue till eternity, right? So what is the way forward? Yeah, the way forward is simple. First, there should be strict compliance with the presidential directive. Okay. Pay our four months salaries. Okay, apart from that four months salaries, one, what next? Two, reconstitute the governing councils. Of the, because they all you know, refer, And the people all, are there, right? They are there. They, 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 were, they dissolved. They, they were yes, dissolved. Yes, I know. I mean government. that there are competent people that of can course. form the governing council. The, yes. Okay. Reconstitute the government because there is no governance in universities now because those governing councils are not there. So in vice chancellor, everybody has to go to Abuja to get approval, even to do the smallest thing. Which, Instead of doing exactly. it. So they, that is the second thing. Reconstitute okay. the governing councils. Number three, go back to your drawing board. Let's negotiate the 2009 agreement. Yes. If there are areas the government is not comfortable, bring it to the table. If there are areas you don't have, let's come to a table to talk. And more importantly, okay. as provided and finally, in, and finally, as provided in 2023 budgets, the 50 billion in allowance, which are work that we've worked for, yes. should be paid without this thing. And government also have to look at state universities. All right. Because the situation in state university is even worse than what obtains in some federal universities. All right. Thank you very much, Nuri, to Yusuf, Chairman, yeah. Senior Staff Association of Nigeria Universities, University mm -hmm. of Abuja Chapter, for mm -hmm. helping me in anchoring this mm -hmm. Thank you program. So much, of course, because you have you. answered some of the issues raised by our callers. We hope to have you some other time, Thank and you. we hope the problem gets resolved as soon as possible so that academic activities will continue in the universities. Thank you very much. Yes. And University, and we hope that authorities, not only there, but across Nigeria, will take adequate measures next time to protect lives and
property. And that's a wrap on today's package. We hope you found the conversation engaging and informative. And be sure to join Daily Politics here in every week special package of Friday during which we open the telephone line for you to comment on national issues as you do. Join us next week for more interesting packages of the program. For now, bye-bye. I'm Hamza Idris.